Kensington is something that still is a bit of a blot on your record. Looking back, did you act too early? Yeah, I think we, you know, I think people say don't catch a falling knife. We caught a bit of a falling knife. I think we reacted very quickly to adjust what we were doing. We closed up the origination side. We got rid of, we adjusted the head count from 400 to about 80. And um, it's profitable from our point of view. We're managing it quite well. And we issued the shares up at six pounds. You know, today they're two pound thirty something. So overall, I think we're going to come out okay with Kensington. Hmm. But uh, it's you know, it's just like Fetcher was a tough process to go through. But we ended up coming out okay. But it was very tough in the process because we are a very robust and resilient bunch. So we will adapt and take advantage of, you know, our position. Are you looking at other opportunities, or are you a bit gun shy of? No, we're not gun shy. I think uh, opportunities will start coming. Um, they, they're not there now. I don't think they are there now. There has been a lot of pain. You need a bit more pain. I think where the opportunities are in the normal day-to-day -day activities, there are lots of opportunities. But on the strategic front, you know, people now are looking at their portfolios and saying, well, what should we be in, what shouldn't we be in? And, you know, we did that adjustment in 2002, 2003. When we sold Israel, we closed down and sold parts of America. We shrunk our business model to focus in a few geographies as opposed to many. And so we don't have to go through that process again. Uh, we won't step out of our tram lines again. We will make sure that whatever we do is within our core areas of strength. So, uh, but we're not looking at anything at the moment. But, you know, we, in time, we think that there will be opportunities. If you go back a few years, at that time, your vision was to be the most admired investment bank in the world. People looked at you and thought, well, this is not possible with the Merrill Lynch's and the Lehman Brothers and so on, uh, who were like giants compared yeah. with you. But it's getting closer. Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, there's, there's great investment banks there. A lot of them are, have disappeared, but you've got Goldman's, you've got Morgan Stanley. Um, is that who you now putting your time Well, we're not on? really an investment bank. They become more like us because they become bank holding companies as opposed to investment bank, pure investment banks. An investment bank is more like a stockbroker. We've always been a bank. We've always raised deposits. We've always lent money. We've always had a money lending mentality with the advisory businesses built around the money lending mentality. And then we, and we've also always tried to build the asset management business as a core part of what we are. Most of those international investment banks made a lot of money from trading, a, l a lot of money from originating, packaging and selling, didn't have a buy-to-hold mentality and, um, you know, the world is in it, partly in its space today because of that lack of buy-to-hold mentality where you weren't going to hold the risk, you were going to lay it off. So they have a very different mentality. We've never, we, that's why we actually call ourselves a specialist bank. We look a lot more like a universal bank with a entrepreneurial mindset mm. but these opportunities that might be coming along how well positioned are you relative to the marketplace to take advantage well we're still playing on the field I mean a lot of oaks have disappeared off the field and I think that's what's important if you look at the investment banking industry you've seen major investment banks disappear or being bought over they're now part of other banks so you're just seeing competition disappear it pops up you know in the form of boutiques which less capability and less capacity. So I'm not saying competition is gone, it's still there, and it comes back at you in a different form. But you are finding a world that once you are through this, uh, this crisis, or if we can call it a crisis, because I think it has been, um, you're going to find a very different world. You're going to find much tougher regulation. I mean, we are well regulated, we always have been, and we're used to that. And uh, I think that certain of the non-regulated entities are going to find that they're going to be regulated. Investment banks internationally are going to face tougher regulation than they had before because they're now banks. And so, you know, we welcome all that because at least it levels the playing field. At least people start pricing risk properly and uh, you start getting a much more livable environment as opposed to this crazy environment that we were in from, I would say, 2003 to 2007. We well, you had a disadvantage then? On a regulatory front? Um, yeah, you were at a disadvantage because um, you, you had people who were unregulated doing a whole lot of things, didn't have to have capital for what they did. You had people who were regulated but had a different regulatory regime who didn't have to hold capital for what they did, and therefore they priced things very finely. And I think that's why you got the pricing of risk just evaporate. And uh, we're much happier when people price risk properly because at least you know you're not buying, holding an asset that's going to be at the wrong price. 
So we're much happier when you get to that kind of situation. And we stood back from many deals, and our staff were saying, but you don't want to do business for a while. From about 2007, they were shouting, you guys, what, what, what have you lost your nerve? And we're saying, no, pricing is wrong, risk is wrong. Mm. Stephen, it sounds to me like you're confident that you threw the worst at Investec. Yeah, I, th I think the financial sector is moving through the crisis, is closer to the end of the crisis than the beginning, a lot, a lot very far down the road. I think you've seen massive restructuring taking place globally. I think now what one has to cope with is a normal, weak economy, and I think the economies of the world are obviously expected to be weaker than previous crises. But you were, had to confront a double dip. You had a financial crisis starting an economic crisis. Normally it's the other way around. And this time financial crisis started an economic crisis, so you have to go through this process twice. And I think that we're well on the way to that, but the economy still have to, they won't pick up to what they were. I think they're going to be slow and clumsy for probably five, ten years, but I'm sure the space is going to be a lot better than it's been. It's been quite tumultuous, if I can use that word. And your priority right now, is it in rebuilding capital or building your capital well, we, base? Yeah, we've got, a, we, we, we've got a healthy capital base, but we've said that in a new world, Regulators are going to require higher capital. You heard the fellow from the FSA, Lord Turner, say yesterday that he, he's going to demand more capital from banks. We've always carried extra capital and have had higher capital, so we're just going to carry a bit extra more. And we've said in November we've widened our dividend cover because we say we want to build our Tier 1 capital up to above 11%. It's in South Africa, 10.5, in the UK, 9.6. Um, our total capital in South Africa is 13.8, in the UK, 15.3. And uh, we want to build it up to 11%, the tier one ratio up to 11, by 2000, the end of 2010. And so we cut our dividend back in November. We were the first guys to cut our dividends. You're seeing other people now cut their dividends. And, uh, you know, that's the way to go for the time being. Stephen, you have forecast that your earnings are going to be down between 22 and 30% in yeah. this financial year yeah. to the end of March. Does that mean that the dividend will be reduced by a greater percentage? Than well, that? the dividend cover is widened, so it will mm -hmm. be by a greater percentage if you follow the dividend cover. That you know, We increased our dividend cover from top end of the range from 2.2 to 3.5. Where do you think dividend cover is going to settle in the future? I think once one's got our capital to the level that we're comfortable to have it, uh, based on our new targets, um, I guess it will settle between two and a half and three, but that's early days for that. Mm. So you could come back, you could uh, well no, be more generous. Yeah, no, because you're gonna, it, asset growth is going to is 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 going to be tough, um, and you're not go, don't want to chase assets anyway. So you'll start seeing a decent capital generation. We saw that RMB cut back significantly on its trading operations, um, perhaps because they've taken some big knocks yeah. in the past couple of years. Have you had a, a similar approach at Investec? No, we have a, we've always had a different approach. Um, we've always, we, we had trading losses in 2002, and we said from now on we build our trading off the back of customer flows. So we haven't had any any kind of trading losses so your difficult time in fact came seven years ago not just last yeah year. we went through a difficult patch uh, we expanded too quickly internationally we tried on too many things internationally and we had to reorganize and reshape so we went through a tough period then we did that and um, that's why i think going into this crisis we a lot better positioned yet the market didn't believe so your share price is down at levels that we haven't seen for many years yeah, it's down to, I think, 2,004 levels, um, if you look at it right now. That's about where it's gone to. So, yeah, it's really, uh, but, you know, if you look at the peer groups around the world, they're much, much worse than that. I mean, you know, Irish banks, 97% of their share price gone. British banks, 75% gone. Uh, U.S. banks, if you look at the key U.S. banks, 90-something percent gone. So, you know, you've got to put it into context. Yes, against the South African banks, we slight, we've lost a little bit more in terms of share price in that four-year period, not too far. But if you look at us in a global context, you might take Macquarie, a very good bank in Australia, there's much worse than ours. So you've got to put it, people here don't put you into the global context that you're in. They put you into just your local context. Our South African business earnings on, are, are down less than 10% uh, this year. Um, with bigger impairments. You know, without impairments, we'd be up. So, you know, I, I don't know. Stephen Kossif, Chief Executive of Investec.